Appreciate it very much. Thank you all. I see a lot of, a lot of familiar faces out there, a lot of friends. So uh, thank you for being there. I think there's some folks watching online also. So uh, hello, everybody in the office. Uh, it's uh, truly a blessing to be able to be here today with you all to share a little bit about our story of Black Walnuts and what we do and what we have done and what we see as some new opportunities, perhaps, that we're involved in and that perhaps landowners can be involved in, too. So the Agroforestry uh, Center is something that's uh, been very close to my father and all the people that have worked in our business over the years, generations. Dr. Garrett up there, great to see you. Uh, and uh, Gene's worked with us since the 1970s, I think. And uh, all the folks uh, at uh, Center for Agroforestry since then, Shabu and Mike and now Sarah, so, uh, and everyone too. A lot of great research, great work has been done, and uh, there are a lot of great things yet to come. So it's an exciting time to be involved in black walnuts, and I'll give you a little, little uh, uh, preview of what that, that may look like. Um, is that going here? Let's see now. What do we need to do? It's clicking on here. There we go. Okay. What we'll cover today is uh, some basics about black walnuts. For those of you who haven't really known much about black walnuts, I'll cover some things about uh, how they're unique from what we hear about as walnuts, which are actually California walnuts or English walnuts. How you determine that black walnut is very unique. It's actually a state tree nut of Missouri. Some of you probably knew that. But Missouri leads the world in production of black walnuts. And that's one, one thing that makes it unique. That's a very special thing that uh, the Department of Agriculture is pretty excited about. Right, Jennifer? And uh, a lot of folks here in the state. Uh, we've had some governors that uh, have talked about that from time to time as well. Uh, wild crop, low nut meat yield. And I'll talk about that as well. Nut meat markets, some things that we're doing with nut meats right now, uh, some current consumptions, and also the shell, uses for the shell, things that we're doing there. Uh, we'll talk about new opportunities then uh, with nut meats, some new products, some new ideas, new ways that black walnut nut meats are being used. Pretty exciting there. PR and social media is becoming a bigger and bigger factor in a lot of ways that most of you uh, have seen or many of you are very, very involved with, I'm sure. Health research has been done and continues to be done, some by folks right here at the university. New technology that's uh, being implemented, uh, one new machine just this year, and uh, some new things coming up that uh, could be pretty interesting as well. Shell products, a couple of really interesting shell products I think you'll find fascinating. Uh, and then the future supply from improved varieties. Uh, the improved varieties of black walnuts are something that's been worked on for many, many years. A lot of folks here at the Agroforestry Center, and this is a real opportunity for landowners uh, in years to come, we think. So, uh, Hammond's Products Company, this is an aerial shot of our plant. Uh, we started in 1946. My grandfather started the business, and uh, he was a grocery store owner. Uh, some of the things uh, about entrepreneurship and uh, doing things creatively, that kind of resonates with us, uh, because that's what my grandfather did, my father after him, and uh, I'm, I'm thankful to be able to be uh, a part of this uh, now. And uh, we've got a fourth generation. Uh, my nephew Jacob is our VP of Sales and Marketing. And uh, my son has been involved with the Black Wallet Marketing Board as well. Um, we, uh, we have SQF over there on the right because safe quality food is a very important part of our plant operation. Uh, consumers require that their food be safe. They want it high quality. Our customers demand it. Uh, our direct customers, like the food processing industry, ice cream companies, and things like that, um, and we've got to be doing it. FDA now requires it as well. So there's a lot of regulatory issues as well as a lot of consumer issues and reasons that we pay very close attention to our processes and uh, uh, making sure we document a lot of things. So it's, uh, it's, it's a challenge, but it's something that uh, we do as a part of the global food industry now. Well, let me go back in just a second. The Black Walnut Marketing Board logo is there as well. Um, we have uh, a group of people that gets together quarterly to talk about how to improve the markets for black walnuts long term. And uh, the uh, Missouri Department of Agriculture, uh, some, some folks sometimes from the Center for Agriculture come, uh, Missouri State University, and uh, we have a hauling operator, a grower, Andy Thomas, 
uh, as well as some marketing people and uh, food chef professionals that, that are part of that. So uh, it's a good thing to have uh, to position for the long-term future in growing the entire usage of black walnut. How are black walnuts unique then? Well, there are three main features. One is that they are bold in flavor. Uh, that, that flavor is very pungent. Um, what would you say would be the defining characteristics if you have black walnuts? Anybody just shout out uh, what you think of when you think of tasting black walnuts? Earthy. That's, any others? Robust? Hard? Okay. <laughs> A lot of things come to mind. It's one of those unique flavors that you almost have to experience uh, to try. Did you all have any of the uh, cake outside, the coffee cake? Oh, man. They did a nice job with that, didn't they? Yeah, well, I could taste plenty of black walnut flavor in there mixed in with all the other things. So that, was, that was really good. Kudos to whoever did that. That flavor is the unique attribute of black walnuts that consumers are looking for. Uh, that's something that uh, is very different than English walnuts. English walnut has a mild flavor. Uh, English walnut comes in shell, people crack them. Black walnuts, you don't usually get them in shell and crack them yourself. Some people do, but they have to know what they're doing, have a good cracker to do that. But uh, uh, they use them in a lot of different ways because of that flavor. Uh, Mintel, the researcher, research organization that does a lot of food research, tells us that consumers are looking for two things in their foods. Yeah, they're concerned with cost, but they're mostly concerned with flavor. And so even though they look for healthy foods, healthy ingredients, we talk about all the different things that are food trends now, flavor is still right up there at the top. Black walnuts provide a very bold, earthy flavor that brings back a lot of memories for a lot of people. Uh, for some people, if they haven't had it before, it's a little pungent, it's a little bit, a little much. So uh, uh, it's, a, it's an acquired taste that uh, some folks really know and love. It's a wild nut. And uh, I've got a couple of slides that we'll talk about that here in a minute. But it's sourced from uh, trees that are grown in the wild. Yards, fields, pastures. People pick them up by hand. And that's how, that's how they're sourced right now. Hopefully that may change one of these days. In, uh, in the way that we can increase the supply with some of the, the landowner produced orchards. And then the health benefits. How many of you know that nuts are healthy? Nuts are healthy, right? If I'd asked that 30 years ago, we probably got a different answer because they are high in calories. Well, now enough research has been done that we know that tree nuts are healthy. The International Nut Council, which uh, we're a tiny part of, uh, helped to do some of that research. So when you see uh, a new study on walnuts or pecans or uh, almonds or cashews or something like that, um, that kind of goes along with black walnuts too because we have many of the same nutritional characteristics. No cholesterol, high in good fats, and for black walnuts, high in protein. Black walnuts have more protein than any other tree nut, including almonds. I don't know if you knew that, but that's a real great opportunity for, for black walnuts down the road. I mentioned that they're, they're wildly sourced. Just a little bit more about that. Uh, this is a map that shows where black walnuts grow wild. Normally, about 65% of the wild crop comes from Missouri. We have uh, 220 buying stations uh, throughout this growing region. Um, and Missouri has most of those, about 120 or so. You know what state is second to Missouri in production of, uh, well, let me say, Second in numbers of trees of black walnuts. Indiana is, is close. Ohio, I heard that. It is Ohio is second in numbers of wild trees, according to the forestry folks. So Missouri has a lot of these naturally growing. That's one reason that people, and also people pick them up well. We have a, a very industrious population uh, in a lot of rural areas. This is just kind of the thing you do during October and the fall of the year. We show a, a couple of scenes there of folks doing that. Uh, it is October. The average is about 20 to 25 million pounds a year in shell. Now, you know, those, the shells are very thick and hard. There's not a lot of nut meat in there. 
Um, about six and a half percent nut meat yield is what we see. There's not a lot there. And the key thing here is that wild foods are becoming a, a trend among consumers. Consumers like to have wild, local, uh, and harvested is good, uh, those kinds of healthy uh, types of things that, that consumers uh, are seeing now as trends. And chefs also are seeing those trends. Here's the harvest trend. It's a pretty variable uh, crop. Big crop, small crop. That's sort of the, the trend. That's one thing that makes it difficult is uh, uh, we have to buy what we can when the crop is there. And when it's short, like it was this fall, uh, we deal with, with, with that. We hope we have enough carryover. And the good news is we do have enough carryover to take care of consumers. So you won't run short of black walnuts in your ice cream or your brownies or cake or things like that. As you can see there, uh, this past year was uh, just a little over 12 million pounds. Um, <clears throat> when you look at the trends, you'll say, well, what does 2020 look like? We're expecting it could be a pretty good crop. A lot of factors go into that, but uh, we're preparing for the possibility, praying for the weather to be good. Uh, that's going to be one key, but uh, we're looking forward to that. The nut meat yield, as I mentioned, is very, very low. Uh, when we buy 100 pounds of nuts, only about 6.5% is going to go into a box to sell. That's a lot different than English walnuts at 45 to 50%. Big difference. That's one reason black walnuts cost more on the shelf um, than, uh, than other, other tree nuts. This year we're seeing about a 7.5% yield from the 19 crop. A lot of factors go into that, but that's encouraging. We hope that continues. So nut meats are used in a lot of different ways food ways, food ingredients primarily. Uh, you can see here the uh, retail package. Uh, that is the uh, new package that we recently developed uh, a couple of years ago. It has a lot of uh, attributes of the nuts that are listed on the package on the front and on the back. It has a picture of somebody that picks up nuts. So again, that local, you want to know where your food comes from, uh, trying to connect with that. And uh, somewhere on there it says gluten-free. You have to tell customers because sometimes they just don't know that much about their food. But uh, I don't think we say lactose-free, but uh, we, get, we get closed on a couple things. Uh, ice cream is one of the biggest uses of black walnuts. About 40 to 45 percent of our sales go for ice cream. It's a regionally popular flavor. Central Dairy package right there makes a good black walnut ice cream. Bluebell down in Texas. Uh, Highland in Springfield. Um, we have Prairie Farms over in St. Louis, Belfonte over in Kansas City, Baskin Robbins nationwide, and a lot of others regionally, Kroger and Safeway and, uh, and other places too. Uh, nut breads down the right, uh, a pasta with pesto there on the left, and you find black walnuts in several different brands. Uh, those companies are some that we supply. So if you see black walnuts on the shelf, that probably came from right here in Missouri. The shells have uh, a lot of interesting uses. Uh, again, there's a lot of shell on that nut, so we grind that up into different sizes and uh, use that for abrasive cleaning and polishing. Uh, polishes metal. Uh, it is used to uh, uh, clean paint off of buildings and uh, ships many years ago, and it was used to clean a Statue of Liberty. Some of you have probably heard that before, and that's uh, used years ago. Filtration media has become a, a big use now with the uh, interest in cleaning water that's used in the oil process uh, and in oil fields for uh, drilling mud to help seal cracks and faults. And then in cosmetics, like facial scrubs, that gritty material in facial scrubs can work out real well too. New opportunities then. Let's turn to that. Uh, first of all, chefs are discovering that bold, earthy, rich flavor of black walnuts and how it complements a lot of different foods. Some of the traditional foods, but also they get creative with sauces and uh, you go to a restaurant, sometimes now they have a black walnut dish on the menu. They're starting to, to realize that and uh, we're getting more uh, interest and, and emphasis there too. And then we have uh, some new applications and uh, a couple of pictures there. Uh, nut butters, haven't had a lot of that, but uh, it's, I think, going to have some potential long term. 
uh, nutritional bars. Um, with the interest in uh, nuts and the, uh, the great interest in snacking, nutritional bars really can benefit with the protein and the, the fat combination as well as the flavor that uh, nuts can provide, particularly, in our case, black walnuts. Sauces and pestos and craft beer. I, I don't want to uh, ask anybody a, a, a awkward question, but has anybody ever had a black walnut beer? Oh, wow, okay, yes. This is one here, and I've got uh, an, an empty can up on the, the desk, uh, up at the, uh, uh, in the table, up in the area. Um, Piney River Brewing Company, a Missouri company, down in Bucyrus, makes a black walnut wheat beer, and uh, that's one of the top sellers. Uh, also, uh, Boulevard has made one. Uh, there are several microbrewery companies that have made a black walnut beer. Uh, they call it uber local, is I think the term that uh, the craft brewer folks are using. They use local ingredients, and they create uh, beers from that. Uh, new products, then. Over on the right, you see black walnut oil. That's something uh, that was developed a few years ago. It's a roasted black walnut oil, and uh, it's used as a finishing oil, kind of like olive oil. It has a nice roasted flavor. You'll find that at Walmart stores, believe it or not. Walmart is the largest distributor of those, and, uh, and some other uh, specialty stores as well. Uh, black walnut protein powder. This is brand new. I've got a sample of that on the table upstairs as well. And uh, that's something that uh, uh, we uh, started selling just a little bit online over the fall. And I think the first weekend we put it out there, we had 200 orders for it. This protein powder is almost 60% protein. Now, most protein powders aren't that much, even, even almond protein powder. We think there's some tremendous potential for this. We were at the IFT show. Uh, where food technologists are getting new ideas. We had some uh, gluten-free uh, cookies, black walnut, chocolate chip, gluten-free cookies with protein powder. And it was amazing how many requests we got for samples and, and doing this. So we're, we're beginning to develop the way to, uh, to produce that and uh, to get it out there as well. Promoting uh, black walnuts has become uh, a, a, a big item that uh, over the years we've been thankful to have uh, writers, food editors interested in the story about black walnuts and the people that pick up nuts. And that continues. Uh, this year, a couple of really nice publications, St. Louis Post-Dispatch on a Sunday morning in October had a great front page story about uh, people who pick up black walnuts in a local rural area. And uh, the Garden and Gun magazine Anybody ever heard of Garden and Gun? A few of it? Yeah, it's, uh, it's a southern magazine, southern culture, and uh, they did a nice six-page spread. He came three years ago and finally got it in, in publication. But that year, there was a big crop of nuts and uh, a line for a three-hour wait to, uh, to sell the nuts at the huller. So um, that's a nice publication that... Uh, uh, Get a chance to look at it. I've got one of those up at the table as well. Um, promotions. We're doing a lot of promotions in social media, uh, Facebook, and uh, some of the others that uh, uh, Instagram, I think. And uh, what's the other one that's real big? Twitter is real big, yeah. And But some of those that uh, folks live there. Uh, we have some, some folks that uh, talk about black walnuts, particularly during the harvest time. Uh, the, uh, the, the hits, the usage this year went up quite a bit, over 100%, I think, versus the previous year. So uh, interest is growing there. Uh, also in uh, recipes, uh, social media. Uh, we've had some uh, chefs and some creative people demonstrating cooking with black walnuts, and that worked out pretty well, too. The uh, health research, very important for future development. The University of Missouri is doing some here. Uh, there's a paper uh, on the bulletin board up there. Uh, Dr. Chung Ho Lin did a study here and has done a couple of them. Um, and uh, I think there's uh, two or three other things. Uh, Karuba has a study that she's doing, and she'll be talking later on today 
University of Georgia did a feeding study, and uh, University of Nebraska basically said, everything you've heard about English walnuts, black walnuts fit that too, with the additional protein. So those are good things, good messages to get out, and uh, continuing to do more research. Uh, we're not a big organization, big industry like walnuts and pecans and almonds, so we can't afford the big studies, uh, but we do what we can. And uh, these are some encouraging signs, encouraging things. New technology, uh, machinery. We have, uh, here's pictured a, a brand new machine in our plant that has helped to increase the nut meat yields to uh, sort shells and nut meats more efficiently. We're seeing some good results from that so far. And uh, in years ahead, uh, the kill step method, this is a technical thing, uh, can be improved that nuts use. Nuts have to make sure that there are no risk of pathogens. Uh, so they generally now use some kind of a kill step. Um, some new items like steam pasteurization and a uh, natural organic spray are two things that we're looking at to see if those can, can help us long term uh, to meet some consumer interest. Uh, new opportunities with shell, uh, safe shell for sports fields. You've seen that crumb rubber that comes up during football games. Imagine if that's not rubber, which is artificial, has some potential issues. They say there's potential carcinogenic effect on uh, some of the athletes, especially young athletes. So there's a company that's developing safe shell using black walnut shell as that infill. Uh, so that has some interesting potential. And uh, carbonization. We have a lot of shell fines, very fine uh, granulated uh, black walnut shell uh, that can be carbonized. And that carbon uh, can be used for agriculture purposes to help plants grow better. And um, it also has some soil remediation and filtration possibilities as well. And then liquid oil is an organic solvent. New opportunities from improved varieties, uh, I mentioned that. That's something that we'll continue to work with. University of Missouri uh, and the uh, Center for Agroforestry certainly has been a leader in that over the years. Missouri State University, some collaborative work. Uh, they're doing some things with silvopasture and uh, studying black walnuts with cattle and uh, how that can be compatible. I think that's a good opportunity long term for landowners to include black walnut, improve varieties, wide spacing in with their cattle operations. We'll have to protect the trees, but there's some ways to do that. Uh, and that is pretty exciting. We know that people can make more dollars if they're producing better nuts thinner shell, more nut meats. We buy those now. We pay for those. I've got some information on the table about that process and the results over the years. Working with landowners, uh, they bring in the nuts and we do a grade and yield analysis and pay up to 92 cents a pound uh, in one case and hopefully we'll be, be more than that over time as well. Uh, we have a Cedar 39 project where we're doing some of that work and uh, planting some of these improved variety trees and uh, Checking the economics, because the economics are the driver of what's going to determine how well people plant these trees and increase the supply of black walnuts for the long term to meet the consumption demands that we feel like can be there. Uh, harvester huller for nut orchards. This just shows how uh, we need to be creative with how we're handling the nuts uh, on the farm. And there's some opportunities as people get very creative. So things that I want you to take away from this, naturally bold flavor is what black walnuts offer. It's a trendy nut ingredient. It has the high pro highest protein of any tree nut. There are new products that increase the awareness and uses and the improved varieties to provide future supply and landowner opportunities. And that's something that Center for Agroforestry is working with very closely and is part of the future that uh, this organization will have. So thank you very much. Thank you so much, Brian, and thanks for coming out. Please visit uh, the, the Hammonds Black Walnut Table in the exhibit hall. Brian, uh, I think we have a, a few minutes for a couple of questions, then we'll move on to the panel. Uh, how about the, the two questions right here? Bill Rupert and Dan Kubler. Right. I don't have a question, but I wanted to make a shout out to uh, the leadership of Kafner. Uh, as a member of the Grow Native uh, Committee, we uh, 
I tracked a bill this past year that was, it originated with a fourth grade class at New City School in St. Louis, and the bill was to establish the pawpaw as the official fruit tree of the state of Missouri. Um, those fourth graders actually went to Jefferson City, testified, and it was signed by the governor. So I mentioned to Shabu that, you know, we need, we need to have pawpaw ice cream here on campus with Buck's ice cream. And I didn't think any more about it. And at the Land of the Osage dedication, Shabu said, have you tried the ice cream? And I said, no. And I went over and he said, well, you need to try one. Well, I have you know that the Buck's ice cream version of pawpaw has black walnut in it. And uh, Dean Daubert said it needed the walnuts for the crunch factor. Mm, it has caramelized black walnuts. Let's really add a lot to it. Good, good. Test that, it's very good, and try, try the, the, the black walnut and the pawpaw ice creams. Uh, Dan, next question, please. Yes, um, are you familiar at all with tapping walnut trees for syrup as you do maple syrup trees? I've heard of that. Mm -hmm. uh, I don't know a lot of people who do that, but I'd sure like to get some. We have a little retail store in the catalog business. It'd be wonderful to be able to, to do that. Yeah, love to talk with you more. Thank you. In the back, I think there's one question there. Yeah, you guys have obviously been successful for many years relying on wild harvest, but do you, ha I mean, do you have any fears that people will not go out and collect walnuts to sell to you? Yeah, that's a great question. Uh, we've been worrying about that for about 50 some odd years. Uh, yeah, and that was really the part of the inspiration for uh, planting trees and uh, putting Shonef plantation out there. I showed a picture there uh, of some of the trees at Shonef uh, that Gene helped to plant years ago. And uh, that was one of the fears, is that people would quit picking up the nuts someday. It's funny, it, even as society changes, when there's a big crop of nuts, we seem to get a, a pretty good supply of them coming in. Now, we hear stories about younger generations and work ethic and you know, not as many people living on the farm and things like that. So we are concerned long term with uh, how that's going. Um, but we, we do the best we can each year. Uh, and that is one reason that uh, we look forward to having black walnut as a cash crop, whether it's your wild trees or grafted trees that have a better quality nut meat that you're getting more money from. Uh, that has to be a big part of the long-term future supply. Thank you.